Hey, what is going on, guys? I'm Spawn Trap, bringing you another video, and today's is going to be a very exciting one for anybody that has been considering or thinking about starting up a Call of Duty clan or a Call of Duty team or even just a gaming organization in general. So, if you've ever wanted to start one of those things and you didn't know how because maybe you don't know that much about graphic design or about marketing or about how to get people to join the team. I'm going to explain all of that right here in this video using free programs that won't cost you anything, you know, be it for the design or whatnot. It's going to be everything. It's going to be free, simple to do, and it's going to look somewhat professional. I'm not going to say it's going to look like it was made by a true, you know, graphic design professional, but it's going to look a lot better than a lot of the smaller teams out there, and it's going to make you look like you're a team that deserves multiple thousand subscribers. So if you guys have any questions about a team that you're currently running or a team that you're trying to get started, leave those questions down in the comment section. I'll be sure to get back to each and every one of you guys uh, as fast as I can and try and answer you guys' questions give you guys some tips in that fashion if there's something that I missed in this video that you guys want to know about. Uh, if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel, leave a like on this video. This took me a long time. Also, in the description, I'm going to have a breakdown, uh, time-stamped, section-by-section look at what I'm talking about in this video. So if you don't want to see you know, how to make a logo because you already have a logo, you can skip that section, head to the next section. All those timestamps will be down in the description to make it be even easier for you guys. So the very first thing you have to do when you're looking to start up a team like this or an organization is to pick a good name. I mean, this name potentially is going to stick with your organization for the entire life of the organization. So you want it to be one heck of a good name. Now, I've ran three Call of Duty teams that I've created uh, in my lifetime. The first one was called Ambition. That was an esports team. Then I ran Disarm, which was an esports team mixed with the YouTube content creation team. And then I ran Swerve, which was a content creation team kind of mixed with a sniping or knifing team, sort of. Uh, but in all three of those cases, I used this website called NameCheck to check the availability of those names. You want to make up a name that hasn't been used on any platforms yet and that is original. Now, Swerve is something that if we typed in right here, is going to be used on a lot of social media platforms. Now, that's why I decided to call the team Swerve Alliance because that added a little bit to it. Uh, it's a common uh, word that gets attached to names. So a lot of Call of Duty teams like to use the word alliance uh, or nation or United, something like that, you know, to kind of tack on to the end of their, their name. As you can tell when I type in Swerve Alliance, that username is taken on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, and then a few other things, but I claimed them on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. So when I went on this website, uh, you know, over a year ago, those boxes popped up green, and I said there's a whole bunch of green on here. This is a username that's really available. Uh, if I wanted, the .com is still available if I would ever create SwerveAlliance.com. So you want to create a name that is unique, but it doesn't have to be 100% unique. You don't need to make up a word. You know, you don't need to spell. The biggest thing I want to emphasize is don't spell a word ridiculously. You know, like the word phase is P-H-A-S-E. Uh, that's the correct way to spell phase. Now, the phase clan in that sense is F-A-Z-E. Now, they spelled it exactly how it sounds. That's how it sounds like it should be spelled. In the case of a word like phone, where it's like that, it sounds more like F-O-N-E, I guess. They played it on the sounds, and that works because people can spell phase, F-A-Z-E, because they know how it sounds. Now, had they have called it phase with, like, two Zs and two Es, that looks significantly worse. Don't do something like that. I want to emphasize that you need to actually spell the words correctly, or you need to spell them exactly how they sound. That's very important uh, when creating a team that people can remember and people can find easily. So for this video and for the sake of this, I'm gonna be making uh, stuff for Viper Clan. It's a team started by a guy that was mentioned in one of my previous videos. Young guy, really ambitious, really trying to get out there and create a team. Having some trouble with it, and that's actually one of the reasons why I'm creating this tutorial. It's for people like him. So. If I was to make a team and I wanted to call it Viper and I just insisted that it was called Viper, I would look up something like Viper Alliance on here. Uh, you can see that's taken on Twitter. If it's taken on Twitter or YouTube, you're, you're basically screwed already. 
So I eventually decide on Viper Frags, which frags is the descriptive word to describe, you know, oftentimes first person shooters. Uh, it's a word that's tagged along with that. Not necessarily the best word and the word I'd have preferred, but Viper is very commonly used in general. So finding a unique one is difficult. But Viper Frags is a word that is available on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, uh, basically the main ones that you're going to want to have. So it's one that will work for our purposes. Now, if you guys have been paying attention to the bottom bar here actually on my computer, you may have noticed that I had MS Paint open, which is oftentimes a cliched joke that Microsoft Paint is garbage, nobody wants to use it, anybody that designs on it is trash, blah, blah, blah. But the whole Call of Duty uh, movement has kind of shifted towards 2D art. It used to be very much uh, this fancy 3D art. And I'm not a graphic designer myself, but I do use Photoshop. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, I'm going to show you how you can make something uh, that's, like I said, a nicer 2D art piece on Microsoft Paint, which is not going to blow anybody away, but it's going to look professional enough where you could look at that logo and you could say, one day, Maybe I'll put that on apparel, you know, I could see that logo on apparel, something like that, because it's going to be that 2D logo that's going to be on apparel one day. You know, you think about FaZe Clan's logo, it's not that complicated of a logo. It's something that is 2D, simple, and the shape of it could have been made in Microsoft Paint if you want it to be. Now, I'm going to first try and line this up here. You can tell on the very, very bottom, the pixels are shifting uh, I'm trying to get it to be 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. Uh, this sometimes takes a little bit of of trying here on my mouse. There we go. Okay, so we got it uh, as 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. It's a little bit too big to fit on my screen all at once. But the easiest way to create a nice 2D logo is going to be to use a font. But what I do is I go on a website called DaFont, D-A-F-O-N-T. Again, I'm going to have all these links down in the description. Uh, and this website is going to have a whole bunch of free fonts. You can download it on your computer very easily uh, and then use them. Now, right here I want to point out that it does say the, the limitations on the use. So like this one, for example, is free for personal use. That means that you're not supposed to, you know, go ahead and try and sell this one by, you know, using it as like, again, like I mentioned earlier, logos on apparel. You would not be able to do this if you made your logo out of this font. But the fonts are going to give you a very good starting point. So if you want to get one that you could say one day actually put on apparel, it would want to be one, you know, where it's just free across the board. One of my favorite free ones that is just completely free uh, is Babass. Um, it's it's 100% free. And there are going to be some that are 100% free, but that is kind of rare. Most of them are going to be free for personal use. Um, if you think that you are going to be tweaking the font enough, trying to make it be your own logo, or if you think that, uh, you know, you're team isn't going to be selling apparel or you're never going to try and sell that logo maybe you can get by with using one of these fonts that is free for personal use on your team uh nobody more than likely would find out but you technically can't do that and i want to warn you of that uh and let you know that you can't simply just take this font and use it because it is only free for personal use if you would tweak it enough uh you could probably get by with it but we're going to try and find one that is just free, 100% free like the Bass was. So eventually after some looking around, I found the font from the Blade Runner movie. It is 100% free. It was actually under the sci-fi tab if you guys are looking around trying to find the same one. Or you can just do the search bar that you can't see because it's hidden behind my head. Uh, but basically I knew that I wanted the logo to have a V and an F in it uh, because I'd called the thing Viper Frag. So I was looking for something that had a cool looking V and a cool looking F and I thought that cut through it. That looks pretty cool and you know maybe I can play around with this and make it look pretty good. So I downloaded it, it comes out as a zip file. From there I can open it and it is going to give me a, a folder with a .ttf file in. That is going to be your font file. So you can just open that and click install and then it installs and you can use this uh, font actually anywhere on your computer. You can use it on Microsoft Word when you type in an essay uh, for your teacher, maybe throw her off a little bit. 
you can do absolutely anything with it when you're just you're it's just going to be available in your font list on anything so it was called blade runner uh so we're going to look through here and try to find blade runner it's right here so we got a cool looking uh, v now This my life, this my life, every day's a new page I write Dreaming higher than satellites, I remember the days I was flying kites Now I'm living it up, see me conduct, the greatest come up, you can say we'll erupt Never enough and it's only for us, for the team and the fans, we're coming right up But all I want you to know, you're never too old to chase your dreams Watch the scene, make a team, plot and scheme, be the king This my life story, all these other books don't matter History in the making and this is the first chapter Give you my all and we're taking it over not even after it's over tell me your problems i'll give you my shoulder slave to the work yet yeah, i'm the owner canvas with these lyrics if you can see it then you can hear it setting my goals on my body clear it can hear it now no need to fear it i'm moving forward from the past put my story on the dash life is a highway do it my way determination is the gas if you ain't first you're accepting last keep on moving never crash had a few now we have a mass give you my story while in class let it last I'm just trying to write a story worth smiling for This is our time worth fighting for When life would move slower We would never grow up All we knew that love was for when we're older Anything could happen See with the imagine They could never tear us apart Too young to fall so there it is, just like that, I was able to make a YouTube banner, which you can then crop down to be a Twitter banner if you want to. You can see it's kind of similar to the banner style that I use on my channel. I recently made this very simple. I did make this on Photoshop, uh, which makes me possible to put in these logos. I'm not quite sure how you'd possibly put in the, the social media logos on paint. Uh, that could be a little bit troublesome, but regardless, this doesn't look half that bad, and it looks a lot better than some of the other teams out there that are maybe, you know, under 100 subscribers. So this gives you the potential to work up from here, and if you did, you know, say reach 100 subscribers with a logo like this, you could effectively buy a design if you wanted to. There's a lot of designers on Twitter that sell designs uh, that are really pretty good. Uh, for 10 or 15 dollars and it might be worth dishing out that money uh, when we made the design for swerve um, I'll show you right here this was made by strive uh, a lot of these thumbnails were made by Luke um, so I had guys that I knew that were capable of making uh, graphics that I had make these things for me so you guys could do that too. You're probably going to have to pay them. Now, they did that stuff for me because I knew them and because, you know, they were willing to help me out because we were friends. And that's what people do when they're friends online. So, the big thing that a lot of people wonder about is, you know, how do I effectively recruit people uh, to my team? So, here it is. If you want to know the easy answer to how to recruit people to your Call of Duty team, the thing is, don't do a recruitment challenge. You want to recruit, but you don't want to do a recruitment challenge. If you just started your team yesterday, do not do a recruitment challenge because nobody will go for your recruitment challenge if you don't offer anything. People want to join teams that have subscriber bases or people want to join teams that are ran by their friends and that they think have potential. So if you have you know, never met anybody in the Call of Duty community before, you know, you are new to this whole thing, don't start a team join a team join a team first get to know people in the call of duty community and then once you have some sort of online friends build off of that use those friends as the first people you want to recruit when i made swerve the first thing i did is i talked to luke the guy i was just talking about the designer luke was a guy that i had known online for probably six months to a year at the time now much longer but I knew that he was a good guy, a guy that had the skills that I didn't have. He had the graphic design skills, I had the YouTube skills. He was a businessy guy and he was a smart guy that wasn't going to type something dumb on Twitter to make us both look stupid. So I talked to Luke, 
I pitched the idea to him and together we started a team that had no subscribers and we convinced people who had you know hundreds of subscribers if not even a thousand subscribers or in some cases multiple thousand subscribers to join our team and we did that because the people that we were talking to were either the people that we knew or they were friends of the people that we knew because if you're a friend of a friend well you got a connection there if they're your friend you got a connection there and from there you're able to build a roster of people that are willing to work with you because they already know you and if they know you in a positive manner they'll know that you're motivated to make a good team so before you can really start a team you have to find people obviously and like I said the best way to do that is to find people that you know now the other thing you could do hypothetically if you really had to is do a YouTube search I'm gonna show you how so what I did when I was trying to find some smaller youtubers to kind of add on to the sort of roster at the time I typed in call of duty and I'm looking for this mainly as a tag not so much as a title uh, you see all of, obviously all the popular stuff comes up but you don't want that so I would look at um, uploads within today I would put upload date of today and then I would sort by view count and that's gonna take you from low to high apparently there's no way anymore to do it from low to high um, so I'm gonna flip it around I'm just looking at uploads from today uh, based on timing you can see this upload was out two minutes ago this upload out five minutes ago 13 minutes ago so as we go back we're getting older here this stuff largely has Call of Duty in the title I'm looking for it mostly as a tag but obviously YouTube's not helping me out there these people uh, no views one view I didn't want to watch that uh, no views this guy particularly uh, cod highlights episode 31 looks like he's got a thumbnail that he made pretty good uh, this is a guy that I would watch his video and I would say should I recruit him should I recruit him on my team because he has not that many subscribers uh, he actually hides the number of subscribers he has. He only has 314 views on his channel. So this is a guy that I would I would want to I would want to try and recruit this guy because he looks like he uploads a lot of content. Uh, he has thumbnails. I mean, this is largely um, highlight based longer videos, maybe not particularly what you'd be looking for. Uh, but this guy's got his stuff together and you know he might be willing to join a small team and help them grow because he's a smaller channel himself so taking a jump off of recruiting I'm gonna tell you guys about what you do once you have a team started and the first thing you're gonna want to do is have something set up where you can discuss now uh, where you can have conversations you can talk about what kind of videos you want to make what kind of plans you want to have for this team I'd say the best program to do this in is discord uh, this is a chat thing similar to Skype. You see they reference Skype and TeamSpeak all the time. Discord always says that they're better. And in a lot of ways they are. Uh, it's more gamer oriented too. Not everybody has a Discord account. Not everybody is willing to make a Discord account I found for some reason. I don't know why people are so hung up on it. Uh, pretty much everybody I come across has a Skype account. So you could do it through Skype. You could do it through uh, Twitter group DMs. But that's not going to give you a voice aspect. So I really encourage you guys to use Discord. You can download this for Windows. I'm pretty sure it's available for Mac. You can even open it in your web browser. There's an app for it on your phone. Uh, there's so many different ways to access Discord. And from there, uh, I'm not going to show you guys how to use the app. But you can have chat discussions under multiple different groupings. Uh, you can have multiple different conversations going at once in the same group. Uh, it's really easy to chat in it. It's just a really, really good uh, program that's going to be the best one, I think, for you guys to use in order to talk, discuss, kind of plan things out as a team because communication is absolutely key when starting up a team like this. I mentioned a little bit ago that you don't want to have a recruitment challenge until you've already recruited some of your friends and you've really got the channel going. Uh, I'd like to see a team upload probably two times per week. When I was doing Swerve, we were uploading every single day. It was an absolute grind. I don't think it's necessary for people to upload quite that frequently. Uh, that's probably too much, honestly. But two times per week is really good. I want to show you guys a program called Hootsuite that can make planning this out be really, really easy. Now, in my opinion, uh, at least lately, ever since I came back to YouTube, I've been trying to upload earlier in the day. So I'll upload around like 2 p.m. Central or even earlier, actually, on the weekends. 
and I do that by scheduling it in YouTube so I would go to YouTube and I would say I want to upload and then I would pick to schedule and at the same time I also schedule tweets so I go on here I have my spawn trapped uh, my sort of subscribers which is now the wide left movie account if you guys know what I'm talking about by that and the sort of together account all on here they're all set up I don't know why these images don't ever load uh, so I'd click that I want to tweet on spawn trapped I would type you know the tweet and then I'd click right here and then it would let me schedule a time for the tweet to be sent out now Hootsuite is free let's say I have up to three accounts actually on one Hootsuite account so I have a Hootsuite account that's got these three accounts on it uh, and it is completely free now are there should be some ads on this page I'm running ad blocker to the, the it's gonna upset some of you I'm sure that I am but uh, this is going to allow you to schedule those tweets plan them out get them out at good times there's even an auto scheduler actually on here right here where you could actually have it scheduled to send the tweet out whenever Hootsuite thinks is best uh, again a lot of the competitor programs to this I know Crowdfire is a really popular one limit how many tweets you can send out in one day they also only allow you to have one account Hootsuite three accounts unlimited tweets per day by far the best option for something like this so this again allows you guys to schedule tweets be sure to use a lot of tweets with images I always like to throw in the the thumbnail from the video so whenever I, I scheduled the upload to go up say it was at 3 p.m. I would also schedule a tweet at 3 p.m. with the link to that upload it would get sent out I could be doing whatever I could even be sitting in class and this would all get taken care of the video posting the tweet the whole thing we get taken care of by YouTube's auto upload and Hootsuite combined that is a really professional way to go about it and it's something that's completely free to do that a lot of people are not seizing the opportunity on so that is hugely suggested there's also a Hootsuite app for mobile so you can even schedule these tweets on your phone so we're gonna do something extra I didn't intend to put this in the tutorial but after talking to the guy in charge of Viper clan the smaller clan that I had talked about and made this Viper frags logo for in the tutorial uh, he said that he does not have an Elgato and he was looking for ways to record gameplay without having an Elgato well I'm gonna show you guys uh, this is really easy on Xbox one I'm pretty sure you can do this on PlayStation uh, 4 as well you can go on xboxdvr.com and you can type in your gamer tag like I did and you can see all of the clips that you've recorded on your Xbox now these can be auto generated clips that the game records for you which I think is the case with a lot of these Forza clips uh, because you leveled up uh, I could be a clip that you recorded by double tapping on you know the Xbox button and then pressing X to record the clip in the last 30 seconds or it could even be a clip that you recorded that was up to five minutes long that you recorded by using the Xbox DVR app uh, built into the Xbox one so on the Xbox one I would download the app that is the Xbox DVR app I would press start recording I'd go back to my game it would let me record for up to five minutes and then after I mean it's about an hour or more before the video gets up on this website but once it is up on this website they're all right here so what do you do with that right now uh, is you can click on whatever one you want and there's a button right here that says download that's gonna download this clip this video right here uh, onto your computer and you can throw it in any editor that you want you can do whatever you want with it uh, I would strongly suggest everybody download uh, Windows Movie Maker I know that sounds really really terribly cliched uh, I'm not gonna show you too much about how to use this program but it is fairly simple and it is free it's not built into Windows 10 anymore but it is fairly easy to download no longer available for download wow they cut off windows movie maker oh it's on this website uh, this i think is legit i mean if google is ranking this number two this is probably legit i will have this link in the description never tested this link but i think this one's going to be legit now the very last thing that people want to talk about and I'm sure this is the big issue for a lot of teams is how do you get viewers how do you get subscribers because once you get viewers once you get subscribers and once you have a base built up where people are watching your content people are subscribing to your content they're loving your content that's when you put out a recruitment challenge you don't put out a recruitment challenge until you got content that people like and that people care about because you want to create 
a certain standard that goes with your channel and you don't want it to be a bottom barrel standard. You want this to be a team that people want to join because it's good, it's hard to get into. If your team is easy to get into, people aren't going to want to join. Uh, they're going to think that it's way too easy, it's lame, they want to try for a harder team, a bigger team, whatever. Uh, it's difficult to grow a YouTube channel. I mean, that's the simple explanation. Uh, but one thing that I think could work for a lot of teams is cross promotion. I don't mean that by cross promotion that you go into somebody's comment section and you say, "Hey, dope video, man! Go check out my last upload." You know, people say stuff like that. Uh, a lot of those times, those comments actually get flagged when people comment those kind of things on my videos. Uh, and I don't even flag them, it just automatically does because you're, if you comment the same thing on a whole bunch of different videos, YouTube will eliminate those comments, they'll flag them uh, and they won't make it onto the videos. That's not an effective way to go about it. The effective way to go about it is to, like I said, recruit people to your team and then have those people, you know, make videos saying, hey, I joined, you know, Viper Frags. You know, they make a video. Maybe a few of their subscribers go check out the Viper Frags channel. Uh, and now, all of a sudden, uh, you're gaining subscribers from each of the members. Again, each of those first members are your friends. So you're gaining subscribers from your other friends. And together, you're working to build this up. So the easiest thing to do is to ask the people that you got to join to make videos saying, you know, I joined this team, we're gonna have a bunch of uploads going up over there, uh, you know, we're making videos on that channel, blah, 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 you know, that's gonna help. But the other thing that I wanna show you is something that Blaziken used to do that I think helped him become phenomenally successful. Depending on how old you are, you may not realize that Blaziken actually used to make Call of Duty videos and not just vlogs or whatever he's even doing even anymore. I. I'm just joking, I quite honestly don't know. Uh, but he used to, two years ago, make videos like this when he was in Obey, when he was in SB, and these are the kind of videos that can make teams, whether it be an esports team, or a Call of Duty clan, you know, a sniping team, this is the kind of thing that can get you somewhere. You find other small teams, you don't find teams like Obey and Synergy like he did, and you play against them, right? So Blaziken's doing videos like, Obey versus Synergy. This is like a trick shot race. Uh, Obey versus Naive. I think that's how that's pronounced. I've never even heard of Naive. It's underrated team. Maybe you can get on you know, with some of these bigger guys. I don't know. Uh, Obey versus Era. Obey versus Soar. He did all these videos where it was like his team versus another team. And if you're doing esports, obviously it's super easy to face off against each other. Uh, but if you're a sniping team, Find another small sniping team that you can play against and do like a trick shot race or something. Then that way each team uploads a copy of the video onto their channel. Everybody on, you know, team number two, whatever team you end up playing against. Uh, everybody on their channel is like, oh, my guys I'm subscribed to, team number two, they're playing Viper Frags. Who's Viper Frags? You know, the link is in the description. They check out Viper Frags all of a sudden. And they're like, oh. You know, maybe Viper Frags is pretty cool and I should subscribe to them. And everybody at Viper Frags, uh, who's subscribed to Viper Frags, checks out Team 2. And it's like this back and forth cooperation. So, to find those small teams, uh, very, very easy. Uh, one of the things I did is I just typed in Recruitment Challenge. And then I sorted it by like filter by like this week. There's a lot of teams that do recruitment challenges that aren't that big uh, and they shouldn't be like I explained in this video, but um, easy sanction 1k, I mean that's a team maybe they got a thousand subscribers, you hit them up. Uh, these guys, looks like maybe a 1k RC, uh, 7k, I mean these are getting kind of big, but we go to like the fourth page results and uh, Hero Clan, I actually watched this recruitment challenge, they've got like a few hundred subscribers, so I mean there's the Hugs Nation, I mean there's opportunities here, these are guys that you could be working with. How did I find them? I typed in recruitment challenge, I sorted by this week and I found teams that are doing recruitment challenges that are fairly small. Those are teams that you could play against in the same way that Blaziken did right here and it's going to give you cross promotion. Uh, the other thing is, it's very, very pivotal that you run a Twitter account for your team. I think that that's kind of obvious that you run a Twitter account for your team. And everybody that's on your team, have them put your Twitter account for the team in their bio. So have them put, 
uh, that they're a member of, you know, Viper Frags in their Twitter. And a lot of people do that anyways without you even telling them. Uh, but as a requirement to join, you should maybe make them put that in there. Because then as those people grow, their individual channels, their individual Twitter accounts, Viper Frags or whatever your team is gets promotion to. So that basically wraps up all my tips on how to start a Call of Duty team, Call of Duty clan, esports team, whatever the heck you want to do, and how to promote it. Uh, you know, obviously, I didn't cover everything. Obviously, Microsoft Paint isn't the best program to use. But I'm trying to show you guys how if you're young, you're, or you're inexperienced, or you just want to get into it, that this is a way to start building and start creating success. Because when I started on YouTube, my channel art was garbage. Uh, my videos were, quite frankly, garbage. Uh, but I worked my way up to this point where I think I'm in a position to tell other people uh, tips and give other people help. So, like I said, I didn't cover everything in this video. Uh, there's going to be things that went unsaid that I could help you with if you want to ask, leave any questions like that down in the comment section i will be sure to try to answer them as quickly as i can get you guys some help otherwise i'm on twitter at spawn traps i can help you out there thank you guys for watching i hope you guys learned a lot and i will see you in my